Jack them up, boys. I wish the world knew how faithful our father was. You need to tell him every day. Tell him how faithful your father is. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Then they'll know that there's hope. Because unfortunately, there are far too many people in the church and outside of the church who have lost hope. For some reason or another. But we know the answer. Amen? Amen. We know the answer. Hallelujah. I'm going to give them a minute to find hope in our sound system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anybody get my email? Ah. Yeah, te- oh, okay, you'll see, you'll see your email. Hallelujah. I didn't want anybody seeing the for sale sign outside and thinking, oh, oh we just need to go home. <laughs> so I sent an email out just kind of warning everybody that it was part of the message this morning. Harvey, Har- Harvey did say he saw the sign and was just a little, it, it brought attention to him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, as we... Um, shared in communion. Jesus paid a price. And we sing about it. That we can't we can't even begin to pay back. Amen. He doesn't want us to. That's a glory we're sharing. He's not asking us to martyr ourselves any longer. He he did that. So we didn't have to. He did it so so that we could enjoy this this wonderful wonderful life that god has given us amen the joy of the new birth the babies the babies the new birth within us to to raise us up and give us a glorious time here on this earth until we have a glorious time in heaven amen amen i'm glad that i was not raised in a church that told me that life was sucked <laughs> until I got to heaven. We don't even sing the songs, even though I do like a few of them because I like the melodies. But he paid a price. What is the price that he paid? John and Gloria so eloquently covered it in communion and what he did for us. The enemy thinks that we're for sale. He's got a price in his head of how much he thinks it's going to take to get you to sell it to him. What is the price? What is the price? How much are you willing to sell peace for? How much are you willing? What is the cost? for relationship, respect, your health, your safety, your welfare, your very salvation. Is there a price that you would be willing to receive in lieu of it? In asking the question, you would say no, no. But we do it all the time. We sell out. The church has been selling out for quite some time. This church is not for sale. We will not compromise the word for money. Ministers do it all the time. All the time. People don't like what you preach. They bring money into the church. All of a sudden, okay, we're not going to preach that no more because we may lose those people and that money. I have heard of it 
time and time again, time and time again. There is a cost coming up against the enemy. But it's not the price that he's asking. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation this morning. Turn to Job 28. I understand Pastor preached Wednesday night on um, Thorn in the Flesh. Haven't got to watch it yet. Was it Sunday? Was it Sunday? I wasn't here then either, was I? I was in children's church, that's right. So, praise the Lord. And so I haven't, I haven't, but I know there's so much in Job. So many times people, when they, you know, they talk about Job and they talk about, you know, the turmoil and the agony that we're going to go through, just like Job, right? That's always our comparison. You know, Job did it, we can do it. It isn't the point in all of it. There is a lot of wisdom and knowledge and truth in Job. And in this, in verse 13, I'm sorry, Job 28, did I tell you that? Verse 13, man does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. That's the New King James. Go down to verse 18. Coral and jasper are worthless in trying to get it. The price of wisdom is far above rubies. Precious peridot from Ethiopia cannot be exchanged for it. It's worth more than the purest gold. You are worth more than the sum of any figure that you can imagine to our Father in heaven. To the enemy, you are worthless. He has no value in you. He has no value in anyone. A lot of people, we talk about it, we say, well, you know, he's being used of the enemy. The enemy may be using them, but there's of no use. He really has no use for them because he discards them immediately. But do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? It is hidden in the eyes of all humanity. When people see you... We talk about the eyes of the window to the soul. Don't know if you've ever heard that. Yes. When doctors, um, you can look into your eyes if you're sick in your body. They can look into your eyes and they can see where it is that you're sick. Your eyes speak for your body. God created that. You can tell. Now, some things you can tell a lot more with the eyes. But we should not have it hidden inside us. It should shine bright. Our eyes should shine with smiles. They should be bright. They should be clear. We should see things for what they are. Tamara and I were talking about this the other day, and she she saw something. The Lord showed her something, and she recognized it right away. And she said, I've learned not to dismiss when the Lord speaks to me, when the Spirit moves upon me to something that I see it. And sometimes you do. You physically will see things in your mind. Just like the enemy is constantly playing out the past. Always. It's like a video. Oh, don't you remember when? And you see it in your eyes. And the Lord will show you of things to come things of beauty, just as you will see things in the past, just as you see the the lies that the enemy is projecting inside you through worry and fear and doubt. And Gloria said he paid for fear. We shouldn't have worry any longer. He paid for worry. It's it's one of the things I think we're always working on, aren't we? Because it's easy to get into. Something happens, all of a sudden... Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We go there. But you, but you have the knowledge and the wisdom to stop. And the Spirit moves upon us. It says, even the sharp-eyed birds in the sky cannot discover it. Destruction and death say, we've heard only rumors of where wisdom can be found. God alone understands the way to wisdom. 
he knows where it can be found. For he looks throughout the whole earth and sees everything under the heavens. He decided how hard the wind should blow, how much rain should fall. He made the laws for the rain and laid out a path for the lightning. He saw wisdom and evaluated it. He set it in place. He examined it thoroughly. And this is what he says to all humanity. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. Turn over to Proverbs 20. In Luke 14, it says, But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there was enough money to finish it? Don't begin until you count the cost. When fear comes to you, what's the cost if you take it? If worry comes to you, what is the price you're going to have to pay to get it back? We have been teaching the children as they are today. I know that they're on joy today. The fruits of the Spirit. In ladies' Bible study on Fridays, we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is what the enemy is trying to steal from you or trying to not even get you to have. Maybe you don't have some of these things. What is the price? Proverbs 20, verse 11 says, Even children are known by the way they act, whether their conduct is pure and whether it is right. Ears to hear and eyes to see, both are gifts from the Lord. If you love sleep, you will end in poverty. Keep your eyes open, and there will be plenty to eat. The buyer haggles over the price, saying it's worthless, then brags about getting a bargain. When the enemy comes to you with worry and doubt and anger, and you buy into it, because you know it's all about a choice. We have a choice as to whether we're going to receive condemnation, whether we're going to receive rejection, whether we're going to be offended. When I heard it said that offense isn't given, it's received. And I thought about that, and I thought, well, that can't be right, because, yeah, look what she said to me. Look what he did. That was just offensive. But it was only offensive when I received the offense. And that's what the enemy has. He's got this platter of stuff, of worry, doubt, sickness, disease. And he, and he literally, he, he just wants to give it to you. In, in the, he's not asking a price. He's not asking, I mean, he's just, he's, it's like, it's here, it's free, because he knows that it will destroy the things of the Lord. But, he all, but we know that it also does come with a price. And that's what he doesn't tell you about. And that's what when we look at this and we see it, the buyer haggles over the price saying it's worthless, then brags about getting a bargain. When he can get you into fear and lack of trust, you know he's just smiling on the other side. And the Lord's always telling us, don't buy into it. You don't have any reason to fear. There is no fear. Don't believe that you don't get to do this or you don't get to do that. I love, I was, I was still thinking, I, we, I was looking at some pictures and when Tanya and Toy were wanting to have a baby and how many people we've been told and the doctor's like, well, I, you know, it's not going to happen. Lies, lies. God created our bodies to have babies. They don't know what we know. Our bodies weren't created to have cancer. No. Amen. Our bodies weren't created to have diabetes, heart failure, 
Our bodies weren't created for those things. And so when we, when we truly understand the power behind communion and the power behind your faith, and truly what you believe is what you will receive, if you buy into it, you will pay a price. There is a price for me not working out. Every day, I look at the machine, and I think, today's the day. <laughs> and I walk by it, and I get my car, and I go to work. And I think later, tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm going to get on that machine, right? I'm going to work out. Is it that big a deal? Is it really so hard to exercise and eat right? Is it really? It's really not. It's really not. The price is really low. The effort that I have to put out really isn't that much. But yet, here I stand admitting that I bargain with that. Wise words are more valuable than much gold and many rubies. We're still in Proverbs. Get security, verse 16, from someone who guarantees a stranger's debt. Get a deposit if he does it for foreigners. Stolen bread tastes sweet, but it turns into gravel in the mouth. Plans succeed through good counsel. Don't go to war without wise advice. Amen. Yes. Amen. There is wisdom to be had. We saw that in Job. We see it in Proverbs. The whole Bible is wisdom. It's direction, it's food, it's security, it's peace of mind. When I look in the Word, I see the truth. Always see the truth. Amen? I sat with a lady last night in Walmart as I was fussing with my phone, as I still am fussing with my phone. But we are overcomers Hallelujah. with technology. Amen? It, take, it took perseverance an hour and a half later. But the girl that was helping me, she would not give up. And the lady sitting next to me, she says, you know, I'm 83 years old. And I just don't know about technology. And I said, well, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. God gave us technology. Boy, you should have seen her light up. She goes, he did. He did, and the word says, and she started quoting the word. We got, she got excited. She goes, I'm so glad you, God sent you here with your phone problem. You know, and, and, she, and she said the same thing. She said, you know, I paid for this phone ticket. It says I should have 240 minutes, and I've downloaded it onto my phone, and I've called it in, and there's no minutes. I got three minutes left on my phone. I told my son the other day, I can't talk to you. I only got three minutes left on my phone. And they loaded it, and they loaded it, and they loaded it. And we just sat there very patiently, very quietly, you know, in Walmart. Talking about the Lord. And she just kept on working. You know that girl got to hear a word from the Lord. Wasn't impatient. I fully anticipated I was going in and I was going to get a solution. Didn't know what it was. I thought it was I was going to spend some more money. I was willing to pay the price for a new phone. Right? But you know I didn't have to? She found an app. Oh, glory to God. Everybody got a text message? <laughs> so she, and she showed me this and she says, you got a good phone. She goes, you don't, you don't need to spend any money. She goes, we're going to figure this out. I'm going to make this work. And she did, and she worked on it. And sometimes that's how we have to be. Don't give up, right, on the things that don't, don't sacrifice. Don't put it up for sale. You are not for sale. Your peace is not for sale. Amen. Amen. Your health is not for sale. God, God gave us the way. Jesus paid the price for us so we wouldn't have to. There's a... Pardon? I said yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And sometimes 
we don't count that cost. We just don't count the cost. Phineas Dake says in verse 13, which we already read, man doesn't know the true value of wisdom and knowledge. There's, their source is found only in God. Wisdom and knowledge cannot be found in the depths of the earth or in the ocean. They, not, they cannot be bought with gold or silver or precious stones. They are more valuable than jewels, fine gold, coral, or pearls. They are worth far more than rubies or any other material value. They are hidden from all living things and come only from God. Too many times we look for wisdom, and I don't discount, we, sh we should <coughs> obtain knowledge. I got to know how to turn my phone on. I need to know how to run this app. There are things, but sometimes you really do just have to take things to the Lord and say, I can't figure this out, God. I need your help with this. When I don't have peace about something, I, gotta go, I go to the Lord. Lord, I don't have peace. I don't have peace. I don't want to be upset. I don't want to be discouraged. I know, there's, I know you have a way for this. Show me. Amen? We, we keep the for sale sign out way too long. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to... I put out bigger signs as we, when we sell stuff. I had a little sign on the trailer right for a while. Little, it was about this big. It probably was this one. No, that doesn't have a phone number on it. And nobody could see the signs. So I put this big old sign out there. You need to put a big old sign on you that tells the enemy he, you are not for sale. If you're being tortured with different things, your sign's not big enough. You're, you're not praising the Lord enough. You're not, you're not studying about faith enough. There are some things. There is a cost in some respects that we have to pay. Sometimes... It's just not worth it. You ever say that? It's just not worth it. Turn over to Psalm 119. Value and price are not always the same. When my husband wants to sell something, It's a lot more valuable to him than it is to me. And sometimes it's more valuable to me than it is to him. When they offered me, when they offered us $7,000 for our Harley, I said, I will let it sit in the garage and collect dust before I sell it for $7,000 because I know what I paid for it. But sometimes we're so easy to just praise the Lord, I'm not desperate for $7,000. Of course, he just wants a new motorcycle, John. There's John. <laughs> ah, he just wants a new motorcycle. See, we weren't selling it for, you know. Uh-uh, I'm not gonna do it. Thank you, Jesus, that's right. Our motorcycle is perfectly fine, John. <laughs> it isn't John's fault. Yes. Yes, every time he mentions it. Ooh, I saw first sale. He says he was in the guitar shop <laughs> last night. Yeah, he don't need Billy. He does not need another guitar, does he? He's got a few. He, he does not. You do. You do. Oh, yes, and mercy. Let's not go to Cabela's. <laughs> another gun show. Another gun show. Every weekend there's another gun show. So he says he goes into the guitar store and he hears this guy go, I got a Taylor guitar for sale. He says, I, I could see him doing it too. He says, I whipped around and then the, I thought, you know what, I don't need a guitar. But I heard it was for sale. Heard it was for sale. And I love Tanya. My, my trailer's for sale, not on sale. That's right. Oh, that's good. It's not on sale. It's for sale. That's right. That's good. 
Nothing that you have is for sale when it comes to the ways of the enemy. Nothing is worth that price. Nothing is worth the price. Psalm 119, verse 1. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in his paths. Compromise is the sale price. It is, and it costs a lot. When I compromise not taking care of my body, the cost, I will have to pay it if I don't get on the machine <laughs> because I'll lose muscle tone. It's just inevitable, right? Is it? Is it? There are other ways. I was watching the boys, and they're running, they're running track right now, so they're doing some cross-country stuff, and Doug had them out here early yesterday morning, and... Boy, they was working up a sweat, and I was just watching them thinking, well, I ought to join them. <laughs> Went in my office. <laughs> Could have done it. Wasn't worth the price. <clears throat> Your word, what's it worth? If you don't keep it, that was the price because you lost it. And you don't keep your word, you lose. It will cost you your integrity. Compromise will cost you integrity. Your attitude can cost you friendships and relationships. Unforgiveness will cost you your relationships. Self-respect health, safety. There are things that we should find that are so important. It goes on to say, you have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous reg regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. The Lord will never give up on you. I will never give up on you. I will never. I will never. I know that there have been people in my life as I was, the Lord was ministering this word to me that... I have, in my lifetime, given up on people. I've shared it, it with, with many in different, in different places in relationship to uh, relationships with family members that are just, the it cost was too much. It was just too difficult for me to continue in fellowship with them. David and I were talking about it. David um, recently uh, lost uh, an aunt and... Um, we were discussing how there's no one there for her in this time. There's no really family there that um, can um, rally around her daughter. And so David said, you know, he's going to go to the funeral. And he doesn't spend a lot of time with him, but he really felt led that he wanted to go and minister to the family in their time of loss. And... Um, we didn't count the cost of a, a one-week plane ticket and what that cost, and the hotel, and the car rental, and the sacrifice to not be here. The, the financial end of that was not even a consideration. Praise the Lord. I thank God that I didn't have to check out my checkbook to find out if I had enough money to be able to go and minister. Amen? Amen? He went and ministered this morning in a new place, a new territory, and there was somebody apparently already ministering there. And at first he was a little disappointed, just very briefly. 
He says, I could feel the enemy. Oh, what are you doing? There's already somebody there. It's not worth your time to go. But the Lord told him to go. Right? He didn't buy into it. He didn't buy into it. It isn't, it's, it's never about, it should never be about the money. And that's a price that the enemy wants us to look at all the time. He will have us pe- counting pennies when we don't need to. He'll have us worry and fret over financial burdens that we don't even, there's not, there's not any reason to worry or fret over. Now, I know we're all blessed, amen? amen. We're all here. We've got clothes on. We have homes to live in. We have cars to drive. Some are dinged up. Some are new. We get from point A to point B. Praise the Lord. Amen? Do you thank Him for it? Do you thank Him for the little things? Something that the Lord ministered to me a long time ago. If you're not grateful for the little things, He can't even move you into the big things He needs you to move into in life. So grateful for the Lord. I'm not saying it's all easy. I have bills. I have debt. I get get concerned. But I haven't had to sell the Harley. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Would I? You bet. You bet. I'd sell that Harley. If I needed the money, I'd sell that Harley. We needed some money, we sold some cows. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Got a lot of money. Got a lot of money for them cows. David says, I should have listened to you. We should have had more cows. I've been telling them for two years. We need more cows. And then when we need money, we just sell some cows. Go buy stuff. Hallelujah. And it worked perfectly. Met all of our needs. Got him the plane ticket for going to the funeral. Got him, got him the plane ticket so that he could go and minister somewhere else. Paid off a, a little loan that we had. Got out of debt in that area. He calls me up and says, hey, can I sell the other cow? I said, no, you can't sell the other cow yet. And so we're going to buy some more cows, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. How can a young person stay pure by obeying your word? I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. I hope today, as you have listened to the word, that compromise, conviction, self-worth, love, they are not worth the price that you have to sacrifice to get them. I have seen a lot of people make really bad decisions. So we're going to take it on the level that we all live in. It's decisions. We will make decisions. When you make a decision because you're moved by fear, it is always the wrong decision. Always. If you're not in peace about the decision you got to make, do not make it. You might think that you need to make it right now. Don't rush me. Dave will call about something. He'd be like, all in a hurry about it. I'm like, mm. well, I need to make this decision right now. I said, well, I guess we're not going to make the decision right now. Well, you know, it's going to cost more money if we wait. Well, well, God will provide that money if that's the way it's going to be. I'm not going to be, if I don't feel at peace about it, be led by that always. Conviction, when I feel convicted about something, unless, you know, if I'm doing something wrong and the Lord's talking to me about it, I know the difference between that. But if I'm feeling conviction from people or condemnation coming from people, and is that moving me to do it? Guilt? When when people are like making you feel guilty about not helping them or, you know, I'm not sure what it is. There's a few things I I can just sense are kind of floating around right now. Your self-worth is not worth giving any part of it away. My God is not worth any price of compromise for the kingdom. Any price. 
honor, integrity, dignity, your morals, your values should not be subject for sale. You do not have to compromise for your family or your job or anything else out there when it's subject to these things that we've been talking about. Will God give you a new job? Do you compromise serving the Lord for work? I remember when I had a job where I had to work on Sundays sometimes. I didn't have to work 12 hours, so I'd go to church at night if I had to work in the morning. Or I'd go on Wednesday when I went to a church that didn't have a Sunday night service. I spent more time fellowshipping in the Word at home. How many times have we seen people that they come in, we pray for them to get a job, and they get a job, and they can't go to church no more. That wasn't God trying to, that wasn't God blessing them. You should not compromise your integrity for any reason whatsoever. You should not compromise serving the Lord for any reason whatsoever. Amen. Personal well-being, mental state of mind, and absolutely everything worthwhile. I've seen people just throw it under the bus for a price, especially love. I've seen people who have compromised their health, their safety for unhealthy relationships. Maybe you know one. Maybe you know some. I've known, I know people that, um, and I was trying to think of the last time that I subjected myself. It's been a long time, praise the Lord, that I've subjected myself to anything that the enemy has brought to me and not recognize that that's what it is. And so what is it you have today? Is there anything that you have that you feel that you've lost? Whether it's your health, respect, a relationship, a friendship, your, your very integrity. Jesus paid a price and through communion today, I believe that you're restored in all of those things. And you might say, well, how can, how can that be? When Gloria and John spoke what they spoke, and I knew, you know, when the Lord said, ask Gloria and John to share communion today, that it was important that we understand that when we fellowship with the Lord, that he'll take care of everything that we need. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. I don't know if there's anyone in here that needs something specific from the Lord today. But he can fulfill every desire, every wish, every need. And you don't even have to do really anything for it. He's not asking you financially to do anything. He's not asking you to do anything but trust him and have faith in him and love him. That's so easy. There's, no, there's, not even, there's nothing attached to that. And the reward is peace of mind, health and safety, well-being, all of your needs met. And all that costs you is to trust him, to have faith in him, and to love him because that's what he's doing for you he's loving you he has faith he knows you can do it do you know what god never doubted when he asked you to do something or you wanted to do something that you couldn't do it and it doesn't matter what it is from having a baby to no more cancer How, how difficult sometimes those things can be when you're in the middle of, of, of something going on in your life. It may be easy for me to say, but God already knows. He made a way. Amen? Amen. 
Father, I just thank you that you make a way for everything for us, that the path has already been paved, that the gate is already open. All we have to do is enter in. As we enter into your peace and your wisdom this day through your word, I ask, Father, that you will move upon those who have needs to not leave here with a need, but to receive wisdom and counsel or the laying on of hands. I come against the enemy over everyone hearing this word. You have no power. You have no authority here. You have no place. Your presence isn't here because it can't come in. And as we leave this place today, Father, he also cannot go with us. Protect us, Father, from the ways of the enemy. Give us wisdom and direction. Help us to hear the Holy Spirit and to always know when the enemy is at our foot. I know, Father, you say that the enemy's under our feet. I don't know why sometimes he doesn't seem there, but remind us always to kick him out. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As you've watched today, you've had the opportunity to hear the word preached. And as you apply that word, you'll get victory in your life. But it has to start someplace. It has to start first with a commitment to Jesus Christ as making him your savior and then making him the Lord of your life. Paul said this in Romans 10, 8 through 10. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you and it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Well, the word of faith that Paul preached is found in the next verses. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with a heart one believes unto righteousness. So it goes like this. All you have to do is actually say, Jesus is my Savior and He is my Lord. So I'm going to invite you to say this with me this morning. Uh, and if you want to bow your head, you can bow your head. The Bible says that pray watching, and so it's okay to keep your eyes open and, and watch. But let's say this together. Say, Father, I know that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I confess those sins today. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of those sins and to come into my heart and be my Savior. And I commit today that I will make you the Lord of my life. Thank you for salvation today. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that today for the first time, no matter what time of the day or night it is, uh, welcome to the family. Welcome to knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now from this day on, make Him the Lord of your life. And as you make Him the Lord of your life, you will find out what God can do in you and through you. Also, if you've watched this broadcast, we want you to know that you can become a partner with this ministry. As you become a partner with this ministry, some of the things that you've seen throughout this uh, presentation... Uh, the buck outs and, and things like that, then you become a part of that kind of ministry. And there's many people that come to know Jesus. We have offices in Nigeria and Togo, have four churches in Nigeria, one in, in Togo. And uh, we want you to know that you become a part of each and everything that this ministry does when you become a partner. You can see the information right there on your screen so that you're able to become a covenant partner with us. And as you do, we want you to know that we pray over each and every one of your offerings so that God will multiply it back to your hands according to his word. His word says in Luke 6, 38, that he gives back, pressed down, shaken together, running over to make room for more. The New Living Translation says whatever measure you use in giving large or small, it'll be used to measure what is given back to you. 
So we want you to know that God loves you. He'll take care of you and he'll multiply the seed that you sow in this ground with this ministry. Remember that Jesus is Lord and Jesus loves you and so do we.